In this video, let us learn to draw an ER diagram for store management system. So the first step for drawing an ER diagram is we need to identify the entities. Entity is an object with physical or conceptual existence. So in a store, employee will be there. First of all, store should be there. In that store, employees will be there. Then some products will be there. Then we need to sell those products to the customer. So all these are the entities. So the first entity is employee. Entities must be written inside a rectangular box. So employee is the first entity. Next entity is store. So employee is physically existing. Employee is a person. So therefore employee is an entity. Next store is also physically present because it is a building. So this store is also an entity. Next product. Products is also physically present. Therefore it is an entity. Next sale. So this sale it is an entity but this is not physically present. This is conceptually present. So this is an entity. Next customer. Customer is physically present because customer is a person. So therefore customer is an entity. So totally there are 5 entities. Employee, store, product, sale and customer. Out of these 5, employee, store, products and customer they are physically present. Whereas this sale it is conceptually existing. We need to sell the product to the customer. So this sale, it is conceptually present. We are not able to see, but it is happening. So therefore sale is also an entity. Next step is we need to write the attributes corresponding to each entity. Attribute is nothing but the characteristics of the entity. So for employee, what are all the attributes? We need to write the attributes inside oval shape. So for employee there will be a name. So we need to write name. This name it is a composite attribute. Composite attribute means you will be able to divide it further. So this name you will be able to divide it further as first name, middle name, then last name. Since you are able to divide this name attribute further as first name, middle name and last name, this name attribute is known as a composite attribute. Next, employee will have an address. So it is an attribute of employee. Next, employee will have a phone number. We need to write this phone number inside double oval because Employee can have more than one phone number. It is not necessary that the employee should have only one phone number. So more than one phone number the employee can have. So phone number is known as multi-value attribute. Therefore we need to write that phone number inside double oval. Next join year of the employee. So in which year the employee has joined. That is one attribute of employee. Next what is the salary of the employee. Next what is the employee ID. So this employee ID I should underline it. Because employee ID is going to be unique for every single employee. Therefore employee ID is a primary key. No two employees can have the same employee ID. It will be different for every single employee. Therefore you need to underline that. Next let us look into the attributes of store. Store will have a name. That is name of the store. Next city will be an attribute for store. So in which city the store is located. So city is an attribute. Next address of the store. Address is also an attribute of store. Next again phone number can also be an attribute of store. If you want to contact some member 
from the store we need the phone number of the store so this phone number it must be written inside double oval because it is multi value attribute always multi value attribute must be written inside double oval for the store you can have one landline number you can have one personal number of the store so you can have more than one phone number so therefore it is an attribute of store next let us write the attribute of the entity product product will also have a name then product will have an id which is product id it must be underlined because for every product there will be a unique id no two products will be having the same id next product will have some quality next product will have some quantity so now if you take chocolates and in chocolate if you take dairy milk how many dairy milks are there 10 means that is the quantity next if you take chocolates there are various varieties so which is having good quality that the customer will purchase so that is one attribute of product next is category so in products there are various categories like juice biscuits chocolates these are all various categories of product so these are all the attributes of product this product id is the primary key that is why we have underlined it next let us see the attributes of sale entity so the date of sale can be one attribute then sale id is one attribute and i should underline this sale id because it is a primary key for every sale there will be a unique id next let us look into the attributes of customer customer will have a name and name is a composite attribute so this can be further divided as first name middle name and last name next customer will have an address then customer will be giving feedback to the store at last so this is also an attribute of customer next customer will have a phone number which must be written inside double oval because it is multi value attribute customer can have more than one phone number so these are all the attributes of the five entities now we need to connect all the entities we can connect all the entities by using relationship relationship is nothing but a diamond box which will be connected through the lines it is going to connect two entities so now i'm going to connect this employee with store so i'm drawing two lines and then i'm drawing a diamond box this diamond box is known as relationship so inside this i need to write something inside this diamond box i need to write works at employee works at a store next i'm going to connect store and product entities and i'm going to write inside this a has so employee works at store and store has products then i'm going to connect products and sale so products are for sale next i'm going to connect sale and customer sale to the customer so the flow goes like this the employee works at a store which has various products and those products are for sale to the customer so this is the flow for store management system